Okay, we're on to the next part. As you can see, I did actually finally get dressed. Sorry, I'm trying to set up my camera and adjust it properly. And I'm actually cold now that I got dressed. I should have stayed in my pajamas. But I have to get dressed, I guess, eventually. Next morning, I was early, early trudging through the Mary Street and among other transactions, posted a perim peremptory note recalling Tom on my return. However, I found a note from my absent chum announcing his intended return next day. I was doubly rejoiced at, the, at this because I had succeeded in getting rooms and because the change of the last night's haul, half ridiculous, half horrible adventure, I slept ex extemporaneously in my new quarters in Dig Street that night. The next morning, I returned for my breakfast to the haunted mansion where I was certain Tom would call immediately on his arrival. I was quite right. He came and almost his first question referred to the primary subject of our change of residence. Thank God, he said with genuine fervor. And on hearing that all was arranged on your account, I am delighted to ask to myself, I assure you that no earthly consideration could have induced me ever again to pass a night in this disastrous old house. Confound the house, I ejaculated with a mi genuine mixture of fear and detestation. We have not had a pleasant hour since we came to live here. And so I went on and related incidentally my adventure with the plethoric old rat. Well, if that were all, said my cousin, affecting to make light of the matter, I don't think I should have minded it very much. A. But it's I, it's content, countenance, my dear Tom, urged I, if you had seen that, you would have felt it might be anything but what it seemed. I inclined to thank the best conjurer in each ca a case would be an embodied, an able-bodied cat. He said with a provoking chuckle, but let us hear your own adventure, I said tartly. At this challenge, he looked uneasily around him. I had poked up a very unpleasant recollection. You shall hear it, Dick. I'll tell it to you, he said. Begayed, sir, I should feel quite queer, though telling it here, though we are too strong a body for ghosts to meddle with just now. Though he spoke this like a joke, I think it was a serious calculation, our hebe was in a corner of the room packing our cracked Delft tea and dinner service for dinner services in a basket. You can suspend you she soon suspended operations and with mouth and eyes wide open became an absorbed listener. Tom's expert experience were told nearly in these words. I saw it three times stick. Three distinct times, and I am perfectly certain it meant me some infernal harm. I was, I say, in danger, in extreme danger, for if nothing else had happened, my reason would most certainly have failed me, unless I had escaped so soon. Thank God I did escape. The first night of this hateful disturbance, I was lying in the attitude of sleep in that lumbering old bed. I hate to think of it. I was really wide awake, though I had put out my candle and was laying as quietly as if I had been asleep. And although accidentally restless, my thoughts were running in a cheerful and agreeable channel. I think it must have been two o'clock at least when I thought I heard something in that, that uh, audience dark recess at the far end of the bedroom it was as if someone was drawing a piece of cord sl slowly along the floor lifting it up and dropping it softly down again in coils i sat up once or twice in my bed but could see nothing so i concluded it must be mice in the wainscot I felt an emotion graver than curiosity and after a few minutes ceased to observe it. While laying in this state, strange to say, without a first a suspicion 
of anything supernatural. On a sudden, I saw an old man, rather stout and square, in a sort of a roan red dressing gown and with a black cap on his head, moving stiffly and slowly in a diagonal direction from the recess across the floor of the bedroom, passing my bed at the foot and entering the lumber closet at the left. He had something under his arm. His head hung a little at one side. And merciful God, when I saw his face, Tom stopped for a while and then said, That awful countenance, which living or dying I never can forget, disclosed what he was. Without turning to the right or left, he passed beside me and entered the closet by the bed's head. While his fearful and indescribable type of death guilt was passing, I felt that I had no more power to speak or stir than if I had been myself a corpse for hours after it had disappeared. I was too terrified and weak to move as soon as daylight came. I took courage and examined the room and especially the course in which the frightful intruder had seemed to take, but there was not a vestige in, in, to indicate anybody had passed there. No sign of any disturbing agency invisible among the lumber that strewed the floor of the closet. I now began, I now began to recover a little. I was, I was fagged and exhausted, and at last, Overpowering by a feverish sleep, I came down late and finding you out of spirits on account of your dreams about the portrait whose original I am now certain disclosed himself to me. I did not care to talk about the infernal vision. In fact, I was trying to persuade myself that the whole thing was an illusion and I did not live to revive in their intensity the hatred and impressions of the past night or to risk the con constancy of any skepticism by recounting the tale of the sufferings it required some nerve i can tell you to go to my haunted chamber next night and lie down quietly in the same bed count continued tom i did so with a degree of trepid trepidation which i am not ashamed to say a very little matter would have sufficed to stimulate a downright panic. This night, however, passed off quietly enough as also the night, and so too did two or three more. I grew more confident and began to fancy that I believed in the theories of spectral illusions with which I had at first vainly tried to impose upon my convictions. The apparition had been indeed together on a anomalous it had crossed the room without any recognition of my presence i had not disturbed it and it had no mission to me when what then was the imaginable use of its crossing the room in a visible shape at all of course it might have been in the closet instead of going there as easily as it introduced itself into the recess without entering the chamber in a shape discernibly by the senses besides how the deuce had i seen it it was a dark night i had no candle there was no fire and yet i saw it as distinctly in coloring and outline as ever i beheld human form a cataleptic dream would explain it all and i was determined that i that a dream it should be one of the most remarkable phenomena connected with the practice of mendacity is the vast number of deliberate lies we tell ourselves, whom of all persons we can least expect to deceive in all this. I need hardly tell you, Dick, I was simply lying to myself and did not believe one word of the wretched humbug. Yet I went on as men will do, like preserving charlatans and impostors who tire people into credulity by the mere force of reiteration. So I hope to win myself over at last to a comfortable skepticism about the ghost. 
he had not appeared a second time that certainly was a comfort and what after all did i care for him and his queer old toggery and strange looks not a fig i was nothing the worse for having seen him and a good story the better so i tumbled into bed put out my candle and cheered by a loud drunken quarrel in the back lane went fast asleep from this sleep, deep slumber, I awoke with a start. I knew I had had a horrible dream, but what is was, I could not remember. My heart was thumping furiously. I felt bewildered and feverish. I sat up in the bed and looked about the room. A broad flood of moonlight came in through the curtain's window. Everything was as I had last seen it. And though the domestic squabble in the back lane was unhappily for me, allayed, I yet could hear a pleasant fellow singing on his way home and then popular comic ditty called Murphy Delaney. Talking, taking advantage of this division, I lay down again in my face towards the fireplace and closing my eyes did the best to think of nothing else but the song, which was bare every moment growing fainter in the distance. "'Twas Murphy Delaney, so funny and frisky, stepped into a sheben shop to get his skin full. He reeled out again, pretty well lined with whiskey, as fresh as a shamrock, as blind as a bull. The singer, whose condition I dare say resembled that of his hero, was soon far off to regale my ears any more, and as this... And as his music died away, I myself sank into a doze, neither sound nor refreshing. Somehow the song had gotten in my head, and I went meandering on through the adventure of the respectable fellow countryman who, on emerging from the Sheban shop, fell into a river from which he had fished up to be sat upon by a corner jury, who, having learned from a horse doctor that he was dead as a doornail, so there was an end. Returned their verdict accordingly, but just as he returned to his senses, when an angry altercation and a pitched battle between the body and the corner winds up and lay with due spirit and pleasantry. We will be back with the next part. This is a long book part. This is really a long chapter.